Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I want to answer one of the most frequent questions I must see from all of you guys across the Shmi 150 pages, and that is basically, if I were to only keep one of my cars, of my current six cars, which one would it be? And to answer that question, I've come down to Rosso Corsa, the Ferrari dealer in Milan, in my FF, on my trip around Italy, because quite frankly, it's this car. The FF is the one car that you can actually use for everything. And in the nature of the FF, obviously the GTC4 Lusso, the V12 version we've got here that I'm also gonna take out for a little drive, is the successor to that. It moves the game on to another generation. So just firstly, talking a little bit about the FF, I've been using it on a grand tour right now, driving it on the motorways, on the autobahns, 300 kilometers an hour. It's up, been up the mountain roads, the twisty roads, the tight sort of twisty mountains. The V12 has been screaming. The 661 horsepower, 6.3 liter, naturally aspirated V12 really is one of the best sounding cars you could imagine. So basically, this out of all of mine is the one car. When you take money out of the equation, forget hypercars, forget like LaFerraris that you can't use all the time, forget 250 GTOs that are worth epic amounts of money. Just consider this a car that is sporty, is practical, is usable, is an exciting drive, has the sort of flair, the brand, the Ferrari brand, it's everything in one car in the FF. And I've talked about that before, about what it could ever be possible to replace it with. And that is basically left to this. So we've got my car in the Le Mans blue, we've got a blue Scotia uh, GTC4 Lusso 12 here, the demo car from Rosso Corsa, which we're going to be taking a look at in a moment. But just looking around the cars, you can see that it's slightly updated. There's a new sort of design look to it. They've sort of evolved the platform. This is the successor of the first generation. So just coming around the rear, you can see it's got those distinct additional tail lights, slightly sort of lower towards the rear, more aggression through the lip spoiler at the top of the boot lid. Oh, sorry, right at the top of the window, I should say. But the two cars side by side, it's this form factor, this three door hatch, this V12, both have the naturally aspirated V12, 690 horsepower in here. It also has new technologies like the rear wheel steering, but it takes luxuriousness. And if I show you on the inside here, even in the FF, the comfort, the finish, the materials, the leather, the uh, technology in here might not be the absolute greatest, but what you're looking at feels special, feels like an event when you drive it. If we come over here, look at the tan instead of crema of the Lusso. You can see it's moved that on. We've got a sort of more updated interface. You've got a brilliant sort of technology system in here that I'm gonna show you as well shortly. So the two cars, there's a reason these, or this form factor make my sort of one car dream garage. And I'm first gonna jump in the FF, take that for a little run out, remind myself why I love this thing so much. First up is the FF, and this is why the car is just so good as a daily machine. It's light, it's easy, it wafts along, it cruises, there's nothing to stress about. The gearbox is super gentle and smooth. Everything's just easy and relaxing. It's really, really quiet. The sound deadening of the double glazed windows is something that's super hard to explain, but incredibly good. Um, the gearbox, like I said, the suspension, the ride, the quality of it, everything you touch feels nice, the car looks nice, the seating position is nice, what you're looking at, it's all just super rounded and works so well. The thing that's crazy though, is when you put it into sport and you start flipping the, the paddles manually, which are great paddles to press, and then you get that, you get that V12, which there are no words to describe how good it sounds and how well it drives. That is perhaps the craziest thing about this car. Like I've been discovering in the twisty roads, when you open it up, and I mean, I've done something nearly 20,000 miles in this thing now, it drives like a nimble Ferrari. It drives like a mid-engine V8 in the sense of you point and go. Steering is super twitchy when you want it to be, allowing you to be so accurate without having to sort of have your arms going everywhere like they normally do in a luxury GT. Throttle response and braking, super sensitive, but that makes you feel like you're driving an exciting sports car, which for me at least is what I love doing. Then you get to the other end of that, you're back on the motorway and you can cruise along at 300 in comfort and luxury. So basically, it's the car that ticks every box. You know, we've got a boot full of luggage right now, but we've also got four seats and you can have sort of six foot adults in the back with no problem at all. The knee space is completely fine. You can use the thing for everything, but it still has also got the glamour and excitement of a Ferrari. It is a Ferrari. And let's just put the window down. Listen to this. 
listen to that noise. It's just, I mean, I've played it many, many times and different kind of uh, engines have different, I guess, feelings from their sounds. But this one is just an, the next level. It's just something utterly ridiculous. And it makes it such a fun car to drive, yet such a practical and usable car. So for me, this is basically why the FF is irreplaceable. You've got your RS6s, your Panamera Sport, uh, Turbo S e-hybrids. They are great cars, but they're very different driving experiences because this is the excitement of a Ferrari. This is the Italian brand with all the emotion that we know and love. And you get the point, it does that. You won't be getting sounds like that out of much else that can see four people and be driven in a sporty way and go as quickly as this can. Let's not forget, like 0 to 62 miles an hour is under four seconds in here, and the top speed is over 200 miles an hour. And when you're on a straight road, you can do this. Up to 8,200 RPM. I love it. This car is great. And basically, there is pretty much only one thing in the world that I think could ever replace it when the time comes, when I can afford one, I suppose. And that is to upgrade it to the new model, to the GTC4 Lusso. So let's go back, let's swap the cars around, and let's go for a little drive in the Lusso. Okay then, so the newer car, the first thing you immediately notice is that it's even smoother, even more gentle, quieter. Certainly you can tell there's less sort of engine noise interruption when you're driving it in the comfort mode, but also there's less road noise. The tyre noise is sort of virtually non-existent. That's quite a crazy kind of difference. This is the first time I've ever driven the two back to back, so I'm kind of literally learning as I do here, just on a short little run with the car. But this is kind of mind-boggling how peaceful it is, and that was one of the things I thought on my first test drive. But I'm gonna put it into sport now. Um, the new style Manatino. In fact, you've got the new style steering wheel all around. Um, you've got this whole new entertainment system that I'll stop and have a better look through in a moment. But just driving along, we start blipping down some gears here. Just get a little bit of noise from the car. It's, okay, there we go. Start to hear some of it. It's less ferocious than the FF is, for sure. It's more of a GT. Um, I guess it headed a little bit away from that wild sports car kind of attitude, more towards the luxury comfort cruiser, but it feels like the next generation. It just feels more together, even just driving it super, super gently like this. And Obviously at the moment, just like a little bit more familiar with it, even though it's very similar to the FF. I just want to take a second just to sort of be at home and, and know what I'm doing. Shift was really fast. Very similar noise, naturally it's the same engine. It basics, it's obviously heavily reworked, but it's the same 6.3 litre V12 block here, making 690 horsepower. 0 to 62, I think is like 3.4 seconds. 3.4 seconds, that's like, proper, proper crazy supercar territory, and then near on 700 horsepower. But just idling, it's so peaceful. It's so gentle and relaxed. Obviously it's very similar, you've got more options. You can have a panoramic roof if you opt for one. You can have the passenger display screen um, where you can have lots of information on there. The passenger can see the revs, the speedo, that kind of stuff. But then it's just a... It's actually quite a different tone. Surprisingly, the, the noise that it makes is really rather different to the FF. There's more, when you lift off, you've got more, a little bit more bubble from it. And more of a sort of aggression on shift, but I can't really describe it any better than saying this makes the best even better. Like, as I said earlier, a replacement for the FF basically doesn't exist because there's nothing else that has these practicalities along with the excitement of the car. And you jump in here and you completely feel that to the next level, how it's it's just everything updated. I mean, the, the, the layout of the buttons, everything's moved to make people slightly redone to be made a little bit easier. Things like the indicators you can press down from the back as well as from the front. There's a new style Manatino that's slightly less fiddly. Um, I feel like there's slightly more visibility in the mirrors as well on this car um, in comparison. Let's uh, just open her up for a second and uh, hear it scream. Okay, oh yes, there we go. 
Okay, slightly less dramatic than the FF because the noise doesn't quite infiltrate the cabin in the same way, but you can tell it's there and there's a lot of it. The power is definitely not lacking in this car at all. So, I mean, in answer to the question, find me another supercar from a brand as iconic as Ferrari that can transport four people, luggage, in comfort, with nice leathers and materials, with the electronic sort of side of things that you want that this car has, with the comfort it has, but when you get to a nice road, you can drive it properly and keep up with proper supercars with a noise like that. It's basically a combination that nobody else matches. Maybe, you know, from the luxury side, you've got the Wraith, you've got Aston Martin GTs, but you don't have a proper four-seater that does what this can do. It's, it's a package that nothing else comes close to, or nothing that I've even remotely found. So I feel very at home in here already, which is a dangerous game because I know what it's like when you start looking at the classifieds and decide you might want to buy something. But at the moment, the Lusos have just arrived in the UK, so premium or full price tag. And that is a, a worrying place because it's quite a, quite a significant upgrade. Just one I definitely have to do at some point. Anyway, let's head back. Let's uh, park the car up. It's just a short little drive in it today, just to literally just see what it's like. So a big thanks to Rosso Corsa for that, for letting me just take this one out. Um, but yeah, let's head back over. The really big thing that becomes apparent driving the two cars back to back. So I've driven a Lusso. I've done a video driving the V12 Lusso out hard on some lovely roads in the Dolomites. I've done a video driving the Lusso T in Tuscany. So I've had the opportunity to drive these cars hard. This was more about taking it out, driving it kind of in town every day, experiencing what the cars are like. And that is where I could start to see the difference and what's happened and what's changed going forwards to the Lusso. Obviously you have technology like rear wheel steering that helps it sort of keep on rails when you get tight corners, when you're driving on the spirited roads, but it's so much more about the comfort and luxury and I think the comfort end of the spectrum has moved even more towards comfort and as I know from my proper drive um, in the V12, the extreme sporty driving has moved as well so it's sort of grown in its breadth of capabilities and driving them back to back really shows you that. The FF is an amazing car. We've been having a wonderful, wonderful adventure with it, but this is kind of to the next, the next generation. I mean, that's what it is and that's what it feels like and that's how it drives, even though I do love my FF and that is what this video was all about, about the one car in my garage that could not be replaced because as I just told you while driving the Lusso, there's nothing else that does what this does with the class that this does it, the style that this does it. And in a color configuration like this, the colors of it too, the Le Mans blue with the crema interior. Um, so yeah, guys, feel free to uh, take up the challenge and suggest something, but I'm not sure there's anything out there that quite matches the Ferrari in the terms of the FF or the Lusso. So yes, boot full of luggage. We're in the middle of a trip. We're gonna continue this adventure, but it's a big thanks to these guys for having me down today to have the opportunity to try out these cars back to back. And really, you do learn so much more doing that, experiencing them one and then the other. It's a different world from just sort of jumping in a car in an unfamiliar environment where you don't know very much about it. And you know, you're just sort of jumping in and throwing yourself in. Yes, you have good experiences, but they can be swayed by so many other factors the weather for example but today experiencing them one after the other i've learned something and i hope i've been able to sort of somehow portray a little bit about that so my favorite car my one car garage would be this the ferrari gtc4 lusso the v12 more about that in my video with the t and what i thought about the two cars um, the v12 versus the v8 but it's one of these so fingers crossed some point in the future not for a while not in a hurry please don't go getting any crazy ideas but a gtc4 lusso is going to hopefully arrive as a future Shamim reveal. Anyway, once again, big thanks to Rosso Corsa. Thanks to you guys, as always, for watching the video. But I'm going to wrap this one up there. Thanks again, and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.